From AfterBuzz TV's Chief Operating Officer, Phil Svitek, comes a weekly digital series that shares his insights, concepts, and findings from years of learning and mentorship. Welcome to Phil Svitek Podcast. Welcome to my series. As you may have guessed, I'm Phil Svitek, and I've been the Chief Operating Officer for AfterBuzz TV since inception back in 2011. If you're unfamiliar with AfterBuzz TV, it's a leader in TV discussion. Better yet, we're the ESPN of TV talk. Now, first off, thanks for the great feedback on last week's lesson on what speaking your truth really means. If you haven't seen it, the link is down below. For today's lesson, I wanna focus on a concept I learned from Howard Love's book called The Startup J-Curve. It's a book geared towards educating entrepreneurs. Don't all of a sudden tune out just because you're not an entrepreneur or don't plan on being one, there's a lot to learn. I'm going to extract some of his larger lessons and show you how they can be applied to anyone in all life. First though, I must give you some context into what the book teaches. Howard Love wrote the book in response to a very popular myth about startups. The myth is that if you track a startup's progress on a graph, you'll end up with a diagonal line from the bottom left corner to the uppermost right corner. That's because supposedly, if you build your startup business around one really great idea, then you'll enjoy continued linear growth until you decide to sell. That was not the case with over 50 companies that Howard Love was involved in. But he did notice patterns and has since identified six distinct phases during a startup's life cycle, each with its own growth patterns. Phase one is the creation phase. It's where you come up with an idea and your optimism and enthusiasm propel you forward. Others latch onto this passion and invest some capital. However, reality begins to set in and you have a hard time overcoming unanticipated obstacles and things take longer and require more money than anticipated. Emotionally, you begin to dip. Now the second phase is the release phase in which your product is finally brought to the market. Though it's taken longer and more money than you've budgeted, you feel excited again because of course your product is out there. It will now be in the hands of millions of happy customers, except, oh wait, more good news. Not, your product lands with a thud since it doesn't appeal to anyone or they're confused by what it actually is. But this is where the next phase, and I would argue the most important phase comes in, the morph phase. It's where it's time to assess what works and what doesn't work about your product. I'm a firm believer in learning from your mistakes, but you need a method to extract those lessons. What I love about the way Howard Love describes the morph phase is that he emphasizes looking at the positives of your product, no matter how minute they may seem. Do not focus on what's wrong about it. Instead, find the single thing that is actually working and move towards that with your product. You do this through several iterations until you end up with the product that everyone loves. And this is where things materialize and shift into an upward trajectory, taking you into the model, scale, and harvest phases. I don't wanna focus on these too much as they get into other territories I don't wanna focus on today. But then again, I don't want to rob you of the takeaways either. So simply put, the model phase is where you figure out revenue streams for your product. The scale phase is where you take the revenue model created and apply it to your product and add people, processes, and money, allowing your company to go to the next level. Now in the harvest phase, this is where you eventually begin to reap the rewards of your hard work. Not to say it's all rainbows and butterflies, but the decision making that you have to make is of a different nature. The J curve that Howard Love has identified is a more realistic version of a startup's trajectory rather than the myth of the straightforward diagonal line. Note though, that understanding the J curve doesn't make the journey any less difficult. It does however prepare you mentally for those hurdles and give you strategies to overcome them. And that's what's really important. As the adage goes, it's 90% mental and only 10% physical. And I feel the J-curve model can be seen in all aspects of life, small and large, and therefore can be used to our mental advantage. Think about it. Any project you tackle, it's as if you're launching a startup. It has desirable goals and outcomes 
that you want to accomplish. You start out with much enthusiasm, but then reality all of a sudden quickly creeps in. That's when you have a decision to make, to continue or not. Now in this case, I'm not advocating continuing to do the same thing, expecting different results. No, no. The key lies within the morph phase. I find most people pick apart their efforts and highlight what didn't work in order to shift into something that may work. That has a chance of working, but Howard Love illustrates a much easier path. Look for what's working, even if it's a single thing instead of many. No matter how disastrous something may seem, there's got to be one aspect that offers a glimmer of hope. Go after that hope. Want an example? Howard Love was involved with a company that curated the top 10 sites across various categories, sports, film, medicine, and so on. They were proud of the work, and yet it turned out horrendous. Search engines became so advanced that a product like this wasn't necessary, and yet they saw a very interesting report. Their curated wedding ring websites received loads and loads of traffic. Cut to later on, and now they are a service that educates users on how to best purchase wedding rings. And they're doing quite amazing. Who knew? But that's the power of being open-minded to unexpected changes and focusing on the positives rather than the mistakes. Instagram was the same. They were originally a location app. Airbnb started off as something completely different. Every successful company that you have heard of, you can study and it has evidence of the morph phase. I used the quote before in another lesson, but I'll say it again because it's so good. Success is going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. Winston Churchill said that. I bring it up because learning from your mistakes can be misleading. Learning from your mistakes should teach you what not to do, but more importantly, what to do. Always reset your compass back to the positive side, lest you end up closing your mind off and therefore never growing. Remember, there's always at least one aspect that works, no matter how disastrous it may seem. And I found you can't create solutions when you're fixated on identifying the problems. One way to phrase it for yourself is, maybe it would work if, versus it doesn't work because. See that simple shift? Focus on the positives. Life is funny that way. The biggest truths are the most obvious. If you're interested in learning more about the startup J-Curve, you can purchase the book on Amazon through our affiliate program. It costs you the same price, except in this case, we get a portion of the sale. See, it's a win-win. You get a great book, and we get a kickback from Amazon for sending you there. To wrap this out, here's a few quotes to reinforce the ideas brought up today. Once you replace negative thoughts with positive ones, you'll start having positive results. Keep your face to the sunshine and you cannot see a shadow. In order to carry a positive action, we must develop here a positive vision. Positive thinking will let you do everything better than negative thinking will. Pessimism leads to weakness, optimism to power. Perpetual optimism is a force multiplier. Before you click away to another one of Phil's lessons, here's a few more things. One, I like to add my two cents and highlight a quote that speaks to me regarding the message from today's lesson. It's from Buddha. Let us rise up and be thankful, for if we didn't learn a lot today, at least we learned a little. And if we didn't learn a little, at least we didn't get sick. And if we got sick, at least we didn't die. So let's all be thankful. See? There's always something positive to learn from any situation. To review this lesson, you can read the transcript on Phil's website. The link is provided. Be sure to leave us a comment because we love reading what you guys have to say. If you've enjoyed this lesson, please be sure to hit that like button and tell your friends and family about us. Also, you can support this show on patreon.com slash philspeedtech if it doesn't burden you financially in any way. Every contribution is truly appreciated and it helps defray the cost of putting this show together, which you can imagine takes a lot of effort. To be notified when future episodes release, subscribe on either Apple Podcasts or on YouTube. Plus, the show is now available on Google Podcasts, Spotify, and a host of other amazing platforms. 
That way you can get the show on your favorite and most convenient app. All you have to do is click the link to the specific platform and then subscribe there. Lastly, if you're a new host or a college student seeking an internship in the LA area and would like to join AfterBuzz TV, visit AfterBuzz TV's contact page. A direct link is provided. Or, of course, you can tweet at PhilSpeedTech or Instagram me at BonjourJuliette. Thanks for watching. I am Julia Viber, a producer on the show, and we'll see you next week with another one of Phil's life lessons.